Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video and today we're going to be playing some RG Goblin Company. This was an idea that was sent to me by a Twitch user by the name of, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, I don't remember the exact name, but I think it was Jesse Fuller Music or Jesse Fullerton Music or something along the lines of that. Um, so shoutouts to you. This video is dedicated to you and also shoutouts to my lovely patron Drill Boss D who gave me the idea of Grum Ghoulie the Generous uh, for this deck. So these two ideas combined uh, made this eight rabble list to be played in a very unconventional and innovative way. It's going to be super interesting and I'm curious to see how it works. So as always, show some love to that like button down below if you're hyped for today's video. If you want to see how this works, stay tuned. We are going to jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. So if I've actually built the RG Goblin Rabble Master Company deck a long time ago, but it's always been missing something, even in modern. But thanks to the innovation of Jesse and Drill Boss, it might just come together. So let's check it out. So as we have just said, this is a company deck. So Collected Company is the main thing we want to use for our power to be able to power out two dudes at once. Because let's move on to our three drops. We had a lot of Rabble effects in Legion War Boss, Goblin, Rabble Master, and even some Krenkos. Because Krenko, once it starts attacking, it's just going to make so many goblins. And this is a very good dude to just like sit out there on the board and have it not die. If we can have it live just a single turn, it's done its job. And it's really good with what's coming up in a second. So let's move on to our actual payoffs for going with Rabble Company. And this is what Rabble Company has always been missing. And I'm happy uh, that Jesse and Drill Boss came up with these ideas to be able to make it worth it to um, get a bunch of tokens off of Rabble and War Boss and Krenko. So Metallic Mimic and Grum Gully the Generous, what they're going to do is whenever those Rabble effects create a token, it's going to enter with a couple 1-1 counters on them. And that is going to make it far more powerful. And I'm hoping that's the case. So with Collected Company, if we can get like a Grum Gully and a Rabble or a Metallic Mimic and a Rabble, that would be amazing. And it's going to be super powerful and that is the main plan of the deck. So let's hope that works out. Now we do have a little bit of removal in the deck. We got some lightning strikes, but we also have a play set of Bone Crusher Giant as our shocks. I originally had wild slashes, but a friend told me the idea of Bone Crusher Giant. So Bone Crusher Giant is going to be a removal spell that we can also hit off of Collected Company, lowering the possibility of whiffing while also acting as removal. So Bone Crusher Giant works pretty well in here. And then of course we have a little bit of ramp just because we have a lot of three drops we want to get to, as well as Collected Company that we would like to get to. So we have two play sets of ramp. We have a total of 23 lands, typical gruel mana base. That does seem like a lot of lands, but we do have a bunch of three drops in Coco, so I think it is worth it. Now let's move on to the sideboard. As always, if I do change it, I will let you know right now. Seems like a pretty solid sideboard though. We got a couple of copies of Magma Spray for the all out aggro decks, the little weenie decks. And then we got two copies of Heroic Intervention. This is because Wrath effects like Supreme Verdict are very annoying for us. So we want to be able to counter them by giving all of our dudes indestructible at instant speed. So that kind of helps. Then we got two copies of Lava Coil as additional removal spells against anything that is aggro. Um, but I wanted to put Roast originally, but Lava Coil can also hit flyers from out of like the spirits decks and whatnot. So I wanted that instead. Domri Raid can also fight creatures, but mainly there to bring in against control to generate a little bit of card advantage because it's a little bit harder for control decks to remove planeswalkers. So you resolve this, Domri starts ticking up, gets to that emblem, gonna give a very nice emblem to give all your dudes hexproof and haste and double strike and trample and whatnot, um, but also just give you creatures off the top of your deck. Then we got three copies of Reclamation Sage. Uh, I wanted, uh, I originally, again, I put other kinds of naturalized effects, but Reclamation Sage, you can hit off of Collected Company um, and destroy artifacts and enchantments. And then we got one copy of Shaper Sanctuary to make it so whenever the opponent wants to interact with our stuff, we get to draw cards. And then we have two copies of Chandra Torture Defiance. Again, card advantage against the control decks and the grindy decks um, and mid range and whatnot, so that it can help you get that value in the late game. And then we have one single copy of a braid as more versatile removal, but can also hit an artifact alongside those reclamation stages. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. 
Really quick before we get into the gameplay, I'd like to welcome some brand new patrons to the family. Magnus Lindroth and Burrito Champion. Thank you very much for your tier two pledges, guys. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the marination. And with that, let's get right into the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Blake Geist. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some Goblin Company and Pioneer. And that looks like a solid keep. Got Mimic into Grumgully into the Rabbles. Or probably Krenko. Franco for sure. I think I actually start on Krenko before I go Grumgooly. Krenko, you always just want to get out right away. Alright, Metallic Mimi on Boggling. Pass a turn. So they started on Hinterland Harbor. Probably some kind of ramp deck. How do you guys do the highlight? I still don't know. All right, Castle Embereth, and then let's get out Krenko. And get in there for two. All right, opponent, don't you dare cry the Canarium or Drown and Sorrow Us or Flaying Tendrils here, please. Just play, like, Hack and Oko into your count. Yo, Seder Wayfinder's okay. All right, let's go. Do I go Rabble or do I go Grumgooly? I think I'm going to go Grumgooly. It makes my stuff way bigger. All right, Krenko, get in there for three and make three three threes. <laughs> I love it so much. Krenko and a Grumgooly is so fun. Hello. UMX1, thank you for the follow. How are you doing today? Oh, channel points. Yeah, the channel points thing is new. Oh, yeah, they scoop it up. They're not going to beat the Krenko. With the Grumgooly out. It's not happening. Alright, let's go into the next game against Soltai Self Mill. Did anybody see what was in their graveyard? I did not see what was in their graveyard. Um, I don't know if I need Shapers. They seem like they're going to be a deck that cares about what they're doing. It doesn't care about what we're doing. Um, probably going to leave it the same, honestly. Like, I don't think I... I think I just go at my own pace and do what I want to do and not care what they do. Domery might be decent. Let's just submit it right back. This is Dredge. So the old uh, Hunted Dead uh, deck. That seems great. Let's keep that. We got Llanowar Elves into Llanowar Elves Mimic into Coco. That's perfect. This is the nut draw right here. Alright, uh... Shock a stomping ground. Land of War Elves, go. Yeah, the nut on their face. That's what we're doing. We about to nut on their face. See, the channel points thing just came out and it says that you can give rewards to people who chat in your chat. So like rewards people for chatting. And I got to set that up. I don't know how to do that, but it'd be cool to like give you guys rewards for chatting. And the more people chatting, the better. If you guys wanted to chat with people in the chat, just go ahead and do so. Like it, it really helps out a lot. The, it helps, you know, Twitch achievements and whatnot. More people chatting, the better. Well, okay, what is this meme? What is this meme? This meme is, it was at uh, ag to q and it was at um, ZFG's stream. What is the cute chat thing? Who, what is the cute chat, and who started it, and what is it? I don't know what it is. All right, they're going Seder Wayfinder, and they're milling over three lands. So they got a four land uh, thing off of Seder. So game trail revealing mountain. Then let's go Metallic Mimic on uh, Goblin. Yeah, it helps with the algorithm. Exactly. Just like YouTube, YouTube really cares about likes. They don't care about how much subscribers you have. They don't care about any of that. It's all about the like button. So that's why hitting the like button on your, on your favorite YouTubers 
YouTube videos is very important for them, for helping them out. Hitting that like button helps, uh, helps the video be show up in more people's recommended sections, and that's how the video gets out there, is when people hit the like button. What is this? What is the cute chat meme? And the ah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen that around so much in ZFG's chat, but like, what the heck is it? <laughs> okay, they got the double uh, prize amalgam. That's pretty good for them. All right, war boss is cool, but you know what's better? Two war bosses. Yo, Grumgooly. Grumgooly and Krenko, there it is. That's what we wanted. And now we have blockers for their amalgams. This is great. They're probably going to want to hold up blocks for Krenko. See, I want to Coco next turn and hit two more Mimics. That would be the nuts. Come on, dude. Don't do anything crazy. Ay, ay, ya just means happy. What is it, like, in a, a different language? Yo, what's up, son? How's it going? What's up, Sergio? Welcome back. And they had nothing. Ooh, I don't care if you triple block Cranko, dude. It's fine by me. Now I get out Castle Embereth. I go with another Coco here. Wait, I need green. Oh, War Boss and Bone Crusher. Go to combat, make a 3 3, and get him with Cranko as well. And make four 3 3s. <laughs> Yep, they're gonna double block Krenko. That's fine. I got my values worth off Krenko. I got my 12 power. I'm good. What the heck is this goblin? Oh, I thought he was shirtless. Alright, we took him down very convincingly. Just bopping them. Dude, Gremwilly and Krenko are best friends. They're probably lovers, like, secretly. But they just haven't come out with it yet, so nobody knows. Got a game here against Jin297, and we are going to be on the play with some RG Goblin Company. And this looks like a solid keep. Let's keep that. That's perfect. Turn to Rabble on the play is exactly what you want to do, even in modern. Into Coco after that, so maybe we can hit Gremgully. So this is pretty nutty. We're going to nut on our opponent's face right now. Your room is like 10 degrees hotter than the rest of the house. You're legit thinking of sleeping on the couch tonight? Wait, why is that? Do you have like a metal roof? Or like a concrete ground? Alright. Shock is not on the ground. Play a Elvis Mickey. Pass the turn. Botanical Sanctum and nothing. All right, slam, Rabble. Get in there for one. Rabble's a card that needs to be windmill slammed. This is Dredge. It is... It is... Looks like energy. Okay, it is Dredge. It is Dredge. Yo, Rhino and... Okay, this is definitely God Pharaoh's gift. Rhino, Asian of Treachery. Champion of Wits. Alright, let's Coco. Try to hit uh, Grumgooly. Franco and Warboss. That's pretty good. I don't think they can beat this. Is it scoop time? Getting with the Rabble as well. I almost didn't do it. All right, Gr Krenko. Oh, so this is an eight-point swing. Next turn, we even got Mimic, so that all these four tokens that will be created will now be two twos. This is so good. All right, what's what's going to get you back in this one, opponent? Show me the goods. Sylvan carry added. Sure. Can I hit a Grum Ghoulie? Nope, they're scooping. All right, we're taking them down. 
but we're on the draw now. But the good thing is that they don't have a lot of interaction in that deck, so I think... Um... You know, it doesn't look like Dredge. It's like God Pharaohs. So I don't think I want anything. I just want to submit it right back, actually. Yep, let's submit it right back. I don't think I need anything for this. Because against Dredge, I'd want Lava Coil and Magma Spray. But against them, I probably don't. It's like 2 degrees Celsius here. That sounds like it's cold. I don't know Celsius, but that... I'm guessing that's like around 30 degrees, right? It's like 70 here, I think. I I still remember the coldest weather I've ever experienced. Um it was I don't want to keep this. I think, yeah, yeah, I think so. The coldest weather, it, it wasn't even snowing. I'm just that much of a chump. I, I've lived in Cali all my life, so I'm used to heat. But it was when I was like, maybe like 11 years old, maybe 12. And um, we were like having a yard sale one morning. Like it was in winter, having a yard sale. And having to get up in the morning at like 6 or 7 a.m., and having to go out to the garage and get out the things for the yard sale and put them out in the lawn. It was so cold, dude. It was like, that was the coldest. Like, I was just felt like I was going to die. Like, it felt like I was dying internally. All right, let's get out Rabble. Oh, oh, I see. I see how this works. When you chat enough in the chat, you end up getting coins for each message you send, probably. And then you can redeem it for things. And you redeemed it for highlighted message. Okay, I see how that works now. I see how that works. I see you, Twitch. You're onto something here. Um, Champion of Wits. I could just go War Boss and just go super wide. But part of me wants to go Elvish Mystic plus Metallic Mimic. Yeah. Let's do that. Because I, I want to get to Coco next turn for sure. And I also want a Metallic Mimic on the battlefield while I start rabbling. So let's do that. All right, one, two, Metallic Mimic on Boglin. Go to combat, make a two-two. Not gonna trade off my rabble, but let's just swing these dudes. Metallic Mimic is gonna be forced to swing, but hopefully I can be aggressive enough by then to where we're okay with that. They're gonna trade off Champion for... Wow, I'm surprised. They didn't trade it off for the two-two. All right, I'll I'll happily save my two two that could have been traded with there. Overgrown tomb, lots of colors. So they can rhino here probably. Oh, they're just passing. Are they holding up like a cocoa or something? All right, let's cocoa. Gonna counter it. They're doing something. Negate. Return to nature. Nice sideboard. Can I get a Grum Ghoulie? Grum Ghoulie, please. I'll take one Grum Ghoulie. Yay! And a Metallic Mimic. Yes! Yes. Alright. This is good. This is really good. I love whenever I have Grum Ghoulie and Mimic on the battlefield. It's so great. All right, they're down to nine, and I have so much stuff going. Oh, 
Okay, rhino time? I can beat a rhino. I can smash right through a rhino. I can smash right through a rhino, dude. By the power of Becky, I shall smash through a rhino. Well, at least we're not getting rivers rebuked. They're just gonna get- yeah, dude, you're dead. You're- you're- you're dead. This is fine. Yep, they scoop it up. Molly whopped them. See, if you play a non-interactive deck and you let us do what we want to do, we're gonna smash your face. Like, this deck does- this deck that we're playing wants to be- or it doesn't want to be interacted with, and if you don't interact with it, it's just gonna do so much. And I love it. <laughs> Got a game here against Rothgar13, who we played against in the last video. And the one who always makes us talk about Skyrim. And we are going to be on the draw with some RG Goblin Company. And let's keep that, even though we have only tap lands. Maybe the Elvish Mickey could help us catch back up. Okay, so it's Mono White Knights. Being on the draw against this is definitely going to be difficult. Well, I did draw the untapped source, so that's good. So I can get out the turn one. Elvish Mystic and try to catch back up in this race. And I'm able to slam a turn two Krenko here and start trying to get value off of that and protect it with a potential stomp or two. Okay, just mono white aggro. And Kytheon. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna be have to... I think I might be forced to uh, deal with Kytheon. I'm actually gonna trade here. Before they brave the elements or whatever. I'm stomping now. They got three cards left in hand. I'm just trying to get away their threats. I need to be able to be at a healthy life total before I start doing what I want to do. Thraben Inspector. And another Dauntless Booty Guard. I wouldn't mind another Elvish Mystic off the top, so I can have an excuse to go stomp plus Elvish Mystic. I have to kill this Kytheon or kill something here, because I really don't want that Gideon to flip. There is another Goblin Rabble Master. Alright, well I'm gonna stomp Kytheon here. They're gonna sack their Dauntless Booty Guard, um, but at least we're making it so that the Kytheon cannot flip. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to make happen here. Back in their clue. And another thing. Alright, this is difficult. They keep getting into a position where they're going to flip their Kytheon. What I need to do is get out Krenko and start making a bunch of blockers. And Grumguli is a nice thing to follow up with. Alright, so Krenko go. At least Krenko is able to block the Raven Inspector. And we're going to take 5 and go to 10. And then after that, I play Grumguli and I get in there. Night of the White Orchid is really annoying. Wow. They just had it all. They just had it all. Everything. They just had everything. And now I can't even swing Krenko anymore. Yeah, it's uh it's very it's very much over now. That was a that was a nice little one two top deck combo. They top decked one of those. Because they were empty-handed. Or not, they weren't empty-handed, but they, they would have been... You know what I mean. They played their entire hand there, so they top deck one of those. But now, after sideboard, we get all this removal. Uh, we cut the Cocos. And I can even bring in Domries, because Domries can make my creatures fight stuff. Which is not bad, but I guess Domries dead to just, like, one swing. So I won't bring it in. Let's cut one Llanowar Elves. And this seems, this seems pretty good. All this removal should help us... Uh, win this war. Would you like to play first? Yes. Alright, uh, that seems good. Let's keep that. That's turn to a war boss. Alright, shock and Atlanta war elves, go. Yeah, you can play Legacy Natural Order. The elves decks do. Get that Crater Hoof out a lot earlier. Ooh, Rabble's aggressive. Let's play Rabble here. Rabble seems Gucci. Gucci has a gang. Uh, 
Oh, Silk Rav, Exiling Rabble. Well, I still have War Boss to play. Alright. Lanor Elves. Or Elvis, Elvis Mickey, rather. War Boss. Make a dude. Get him with both. Bring him down to 17. And if they can't deal with the War Boss, then we gotta go in. Another Venerable Knight, a Boros Elite, Draven Inspector. Good thing they don't have enough for a, a Loxodon here. I might just trade. I'm gonna just trade here. Are any of these knights? Soldier, soldier. Alright, they're not knights, so let's strike this. Go to combat, and if they would like to double block, I will lightning strike. Let's mentor onto here. They are going to double block. All right, so that allows me to now lightning strike something. Eat it. All right, cool. That went according to plan. What's up, KGR30? How's it going? They crack a clue token, and now they might just scoop. Unless they find a silk wrap. Or a baffling end. Or a seal away. Or a declaration in stone. Giant killer. That's fine. Yo, that's a good top deck as well. Let's stomp that. And play a metallic mimic on goblin. And now let's go to combat and make a 2-2 two -two and mentor onto another one. Yep, they scoop it up. Alright, see, that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. Let's submit it right back and try that again. On the draw, though, I'm going to bring back in the Land of War Elves and cut... Okay, it's too late. I'll keep this, because uh, uh, they don't really have a whole lot of removal, but if they silk wrap the Krenko... That would be very annoying, but I don't want to risk Mola getting into a worse hand when I have removal and a good threat, because if they don't deal with Krenko, it's going to start going spiraling out of control. I, I planned on not top decking any more lands, but I guess uh, another land works. Which Lotus Field Storm is better in your opinion, Rowl or Omniscience? I, I don't know. I don't have a good answer to that question. Alright, play the Mountain and let's Lava Coil Kytheon. They missed their land drop. That is perfect. That is perfect. And now I have Grumgully and Kranko going, so this is amazing. But now, since they have enough uh, blockage... Okay, never mind. You know what? I think I am going to start on Grumgooly. I think I am. I want Franco to have enough toughness to attack into that board state. Any swings? No swings. Oh, and Metallic Mimic. Oh, it's going to be so... This is going to be a great Krenko here. This is going to be an amazing Krenko. Please no land in the Silk Wrap here. Please! Oh, they just going straight to combat. Oh, this is great. This is great. Okay. Let's go Metallic Mimic on Goblin. This is so good. This is going to be an amazing turn. If all goes according to plan. Lava Coil that. Don't get no counters, even though you don't have any knights anyways. Brave the Elements. That's unfortunate. Now I'm not going to be able to swing here. Dang, so close to being able to do what I wanted to do. Alright, gotta pass the turn. We'll be able to do it next turn. Maybe I should have just swung and got three three threes because now that gives them a chance. Yeah, they, they, they 
didn't get it. And now they know that if I get one swing in with Krenko, it's going to give me three, three, threes. And I'll even have whatever I top deck to play on top of that. And they missed their land. All right. That's, that's a bummer for them. Missed their land, got mana screwed, but it's happened to me a lot. So I know your pain. Everybody knows that Marin gets mana screwed every time. <laughs> Got a game here against Alex on 1000, and we are going to be on the draw with some RG Goblin Company in Pioneer, and we are going to keep this hand. That looks pretty decent. I wish I had an untapped green source on the first turn. Oh, I get to th I get to thank Grayus. Cool. I get to thank Grayus with what is this? Ha ha hide. It looks like a Santa Claus. Gitu Lava Runner. Okay, so. Boros aggro. I'm gonna have to stomp some things. Stomp some foos. Another thing that I can't cast. Cool. Has anyone tried a pioneer list based on Akron Crusader and Phalanx Leader? Nope, but it sounds cool. Hello. Neckfire, thank you for the follow. Gonna wizard's lightning us. Okay, they're stuck on uh, one mana. Let's just hold up stomp here. Okay, you know what? They were able to wizard's lightning us there. So before they're able to do that again, let's just stomp this so that they're they don't have a cheapened wizard's lightning anymore. Let's see if they hit their mana. If they don't hit their mana. That's good for us because we're a little bit screwed as well. They did not hit their mana. They're just going to main phase shock us. Why didn't you wait? Because now I have an elf I can play. Should have definitely waited, opponent. Should have definitely waited. So it looks like Boros burn. So they're probably going to have like Boros charms. Maybe war leader helixes at the top end if they have enough for that. But probably not. And a shock. Okay, they're going to shock away my elf. Game trail, unfortunately, I don't have anything to reveal, but I can play another Elvis Mickey. Um, so uh Kevin from Rogue Deck Builder always uh back in the day he used to brew with uh Akron Crusader and Phalanx Leader a lot. Um that was like his thing. It was like a battle him deck back in the Absent Restored days. I've known Kevin for a long time. Um, Hello. Gildrax, thank you for the follow. He used to, he used to love Akron Crusader. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's brewing with it again. I haven't talked to him in a while, though. It's been a long time. Oh, that was you with the vampire deck? The modern magician? You'll take all the negative comments. Yeah, you know what you did. You know what you did, Modern Magician. You done goofed. <laughs> Alright. We got Battlefield Frog and Wizard's Lightning. Alright, so let's go Grumgooly. Let's go Grumgooly. It's gonna get Wizard's Lightning. Do we know that? Play a land or else with the counter. And then if I hit a land, I go rabble, rabble, rabble war boss. And then with the Grumgooly out, that's maximum beef. But now they're going to play their land and cast. They didn't even get their free battlefield forge. What is this opponent doing? Main phase shocking and not even playing their free battlefield forge. And it's just going to go away now. Yep. Okay. They, they, they strike the Grumgooly. And I did get my land. So now I go rabble, rabble. And I make two dudes. Unfortunately, just mere one ones. Because Grumgooly left the play. Left the field. Okay, so the question is do they have Anger the Dogs in the main board? I doubt it because they're running Gitu Lava Runners and probably Soul Scar Mages in Monastery Swiss Fears. Yeah, your knight was getting huge. All right, took them down. They got a little bit mana screwed. 
Let's go on to the next game. And against Burn, I probably want nothing. I could bring in Magma Sprays because they're going to have like Soul Scar Mages, Monastery Swiss Spears, Gitu Lava Runners, Viashino, Pyromancers, and stuff like that. So let's bring in all the removal. And I guess I cut Cocos and a Krenko. And just go on the, the burn plan. I guess. Wait, I didn't cut my Cocos. Um, It always feels like either I cut Cocos or I cut Llanowar Elves. I, I never know which one to cut. You know what? We're going to do a split this time. Screw it. Two Cocos, two Llanowar Elves. All right, Magma Spray. I'm gonna keep this just because I have two burn spells and if I draw one more land, I, I have three burn spells to burn stuff off and I, I got some ramp, so let's keep this. We This is very prone to being screwed, but I'm on the draw and I have two draws to, to draw before it matters. Basic Mountain Swiss Beer, knew it. Can I get a Basic Mountain off the top? All right, that's not a bad draw. Probably getting Searing Blooded, but at least it's a play. I always feel like every time I get Searing Blooded effectively against Burn, I feel like I'm losing. <laughs> I expect it to happen here, though. We'll see. Eidolon's actually pretty annoying too, but I can uh, I can stomp that, so it's fine. All right, so let's start on stomping Eidolon. Take two damage. There's Metallic Mimic as well. I right, play another Elvis Mickey and say go. Now, please don't uh, fork bolt in some kind of way, like arc lightning or whatever's in Pioneer. Blazing volley. There's a searing blood. They should have only honestly done that on the first turn, or on the second turn, rather than Eidolon. You got two cards left in hand, and I'm still at a healthy 16, so I'm happy. Okay, never mind, 13. And colorless mana. Now it's gotta be red. There's a Soul Scar McGee. So I'm hoping to get a red source, so I just blast their entire board. Brings us down to 11. Yo, Grumgooly, though? I'll play Grumgooly. All right, they got one card left. What are you calling the mystic? No, I'm calling it Elvis Mickey. All right, uh, they got a shock. They got me, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite. I'm gonna bite. What's your last card? Wizard's Lightning on Grumgooly. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's just magma spray this guy. And then play... Uh, do I play the uh, Metallic Mimic or another Lan or another Elvis Mickey? Uh, let's just go with the Metallic Mimic, I don't know. I was gonna go Mystic, but whatever. I don't have any goblins here, but still. Makes sense to me. So the scariest top deck they could get here is another Searing Blood. Otherwise, I'm not really fearing too much. Another Soul Scar Mage, that's fine. Yo, I might I'm actually taking this trade. I'm actually taking this trade. 
my game trail tapped. And uh, let's actually upgrade this. Get it out of here before it starts burning my dudes again. And now they are in top deck mode. I'm at a healthy nine. And next one I can go Metallic Mimic plus Bone Crusher. I might actually just name Giant just to get a counter on this since I don't have any goblins in my hand. All right, let's do that. Metallic Mimic. On giant. And now that's going to put Bone Crusher Giant out of range of a wizard's lightning. Get them down to 16, and now we have it going. Yep, it's Elvis Mickey still. That's exactly what we say. You got it. Um, back in the day, uh, my brother, my brother was playing a deck with the playset of Elvish Mystic in it, and he altered, he did altered arts, and one of them was Elvis Mickey, so he had Mickey Mouse ears, or Elvish Mickey, and then, um, and then he did Elvis Mystic, so Elvis Mystic, he'd put a microphone in his hand and stuff, it was funny. Alright, what do they do to us? Why are we at six? Oh, skewer the critics. All right. So if they can top a uh, double bolt here. You got Monastery Swiss Spear, Shock Wizards Lightning. You got it. That doesn't even do it. Yep. All right, sweet. We took down Burn pretty convincingly. All you had to do was deal with their threats and, uh, like, I feel like a, a match, a deck like ours is going to be pretty good against Burn. That's because we have so much threats that you have to answer. So much so that all that Burn is not going to our face and it's going to our creatures instead. Meanwhile, we have things like Bone Crusher Giant, which double as Burn to kill their dudes as well as a creature that they have to deal with. And so that makes them kind of just like run out of resources really quick. So I feel like that was a good matchup for us. Got a game here against Hobby Gobby, and we are going to be on the play with some Goblin Company in Pioneer. And we don't have mana, so let's mulligan. And this one does have mana, so let's keep it. Uh, I'm going to bottom a mountain, because I see what I want to do here. I see what I want to do here. I want to go with the turn two rabbles. We're just going to ignore Metallic Mimic for now, and we'll just go rabble and rabble. On the play, that's very powerful, going turn 2 Rabble into turn 3 Rabble. If they have no burn spells, it's going to be hard for them to beat. Okay, so Isolated Chapel tells me they might have Kaya's Wrath. If not, this is the only other deck that really plays that is um, going to be like Abzan Aristocrats. So let's go Rabble because it's more aggressive. Mega Token, get in there. So this is like a 3 turn clock right here. All right, let me try to catch up on chat right now. Okay, it is just the black-white deck. You don't see them printing it into standard? Me neither. Those fetch lands, uh, they probably don't want to reprint fetches ever again, but it just sucks that Scalding Tarns are so expensive, and I need one. I need one. Because it's I the last two fetches I don't have are Scalding Tarn and Arid Mesa and Marsh Flats. So three. I have three that I'm missing. So I would like them for Commander, but those are the three I'm missing. Okay, they push an elf. That's fine. Unfortunately, I can't play another rabble here, but at least I can play a mimic. So it's just black-white vampires. Black-white vampires is actually going to be a very difficult matchup. We're, we got fortunate to get a pretty good draw here, but this is going to be a very difficult matchup. They, they have a lot of good removal and blockers and a lot of life gains. So while it seems easy right now, it might be very difficult in games two and three. I'm really hoping this rabble lives to our turn. If it doesn't live, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Because I need this scrum ghoulie momentum with the rabble out. And grasp of darkness. Okay, it's going to be a little bit difficult now. Game trail, no reveal. Uh, I think let's go grum ghoulie. Yeah, let's go Grum Ghoulie here. P3. 
People always wonder uh, why I do things on the main phase when I don't have to and I can just do it on the second main. It's literally just to save time. When I stream, I like to say I like to cut corners and save a little bit of time so I can F6. It also gives me F6ing or doing the plays that allow me to F6 give me more time to catch up on the chat. And the chat is a big part of streaming, so try to do that. The chat's going so quick though. You need to you need a scalding tarn for your is it free spells deck? Me too. I I have I just built a uh, Mizix of the Is Magis deck. Oh, Krenko with Grumgully, that's exactly what we wanted. All right, so now I'm going to save that for second main phase. They're going to take it down to three. Franco. So that, now they are forced to deal with Krenko or else they die. Because <laughs> Krenko is good. <laughs> This crank goes so good. I probably should have put like ley line of combustion in the sideboard. That would have been pretty decent. All right, they're going to scoop it up. They missed their land a little too many times, but this is going to be a difficult matchup because they have like gifted Aetherborns and stuff like that. I'm going to bring in all my removal. I'm even bringing in my Chandra's just as additional removal. Maybe even my Domri's. Like, I just need all the removal. Shaper Sanctuary is probably good, too. Uh, let's cut the Cocos, because I'm bringing in so much non-creature spells. And uh, we always end up cutting some Elves. Domri's, I'm kind of tempted for Domri's, but I did just cut a bunch of... Uh, I, I have, what, 26 creatures? I'd be cutting more creatures for Krenko's, or for Domri's. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, I guess we'll run it like that. Yeah. Sure. Let's run it like that. Got a bunch of removal. Got some walkers. Got shapers. So this is going to be a grind. This is going to be a really big grind. So let's let's go for it. Okay, I have the Krenko. I really want that to live. So maybe I bait with War Boss. Let's keep this hand. We can remove some things with this hand. And all I need to do is remove the Gifted Aetherborns and the Kalidases. Okay, they thought sees us. They really don't have anything particularly good to take here. They take the Krenko. Okay. Domiron's tabbed. Go. You know, maybe instead of, um... Maybe instead of uh, cutting the land war or the, the Cocos, I should have just cut the other elves. Because this is going to be a grind, and I think the elves are going to be kind of not needed. I don't think we need the acceleration here. I think we need resilience. Danto's Vanguard. Okay. Well, they can give it indestructible. There's Grumgully. Now, Grumgully's pretty good. Um, let's... I'm gonna Lighting Strike just because it's easier to go Magma Spray plus something else in, a, in another turn. So, if they want to pay for a life, that's fine. It's gonna put them down to 14. They are gonna pay for life. I'm hoping they don't have like not only Soren, uh, the one that Helix is and gives life link, but also um, the Soren Vengeful Bloodlord would be pretty annoying. All right, let's slam this Grim Ghoulie so that we can have a pretty strong war boss if this doesn't die. But seeing as how they just left the three mana in the past, I'm pretty sure they do have something. Yep, Grasp of Dankness. Here's the elemental list from the last match. Oh, what, was I fighting you in the last match? That's pretty cool. It's just Team Repyro. Team Repyro Elementals. It's pretty neat. Alright, War Boss. Let me guess. Dead? Before I go to combat? Nope, it's living. Okay, they let us get a, a token though. That's pretty good. Get in for one. Casts the Drana. Ooh, 
Rana's good. Rootbound Crag. So I have to deal with Drana first for sure. I cannot let Drana untap, so let's lava go. Oh, I should have actually lightning struck it. I should have lightning struck it because um Oh, let's just pass. Leave up this 1-1 one, one blocker. I should have lightning struck it because I needed to save a lava coil for Kalidas. But at least I have Chandra to blast Kalidas. Dust Legion Zelda. It's a pretty good uh, last card to have. Gives you another body and another card. And cast the Murderous Rider. Okay. And so now this allows me to play Chandra and tick it up. I will definitely chump block if you want to pay for a life. That is fine by me. So now they're going to six, and Chandra can tick up, and I can lightning strike them down to three, and then Chandra can tick up and bring them to one. But the problem is this has lifelink. So we're so close. If I would have actually swung at them... Okay, they're letting that trade. I will take that trade. I like that trade a lot. Put that back on the bottom, and now I got Chandra. Please don't have Thoughtseize. Okay, good. Good. Now Chandra and Leva Magma Spray. It's even better. Start dealing some damage. Gotta get you dead. We're so close. Not gonna cast that War Boss. You're at eight. Four more turns of this. Four more turns of taking up Chandra. And you're in top deck mode. So please don't top decking something insane like a... Like a... Um, Blood Baron might be fine because Chandra can blast it. Um, they did get Blood Baron, so Chandra's going to have to blast that. And I'm going to have to Magma Spray the Dusk Legion Zealot because that would mean uh, Chandra gets to live after I minus it next turn, so. Tax Chandra. Magma Spray. And now we are both in top deck mode. Yeah, there's just the land. So, blast the Blood Baron of Escopa with Chandra. It doesn't have pro red. So now we are back to square one, both of us. But I have a Chandra and they don't. Oh, Gift of Death Born's pretty solid. Pretty solid top deck. Alright, please give me something good here. Yo, Bone Crusher's pretty good. Can I cast the Stomp portion? Wait, does this go to Exile? I'm not quite sure. Well, we're going to find out for science. Can I still cast it? Yes, I can. And now that gives me a blocker for Gifted Aetherborn. That's good. All right, I'm feeling pretty saucy. I don't know about you guys. We have a reindeer Karn. How did you get that? Wait a second. What? How- how did that happen? Wait, what? Oh, I see. They just literally put- put, uh, reindeer horns on the top of any emote. I probably want to block here, right? I don't want Chandra to be dead to anything. I'll take that trade. I have the card advantage from Chandra. I can grind out here. And where else? Alright, give me some more card advantage. Nothing, it's a mountain. Play an elf, pass turn. I'm just hoping for no swift ends. No swift ends. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. That is an amazing top deck for them. Okay, but we're so close to lethal here. Uh -huh. All right, please no removal. Please don't top deck removal. Don't you dare top deck removal. Okay, it's a land. Last card. Oh, please. Oh, man. What is this going to do? Give it lifelink? No, dude. We we're so close, man. We were so close. Why did you have to get Knight of the Evan Legion into Soren? That's crazy. Okay, I need a burn spell really bad because in conjunction, like, it has to be a lightning strike or a lava coil. No, it has to be a lightning strike. Specifically a lightning strike. 
They're attacking us. Well, I can't allow this thing to get a counter on it, so... Or you know what? No. I'm gonna let this go. I'm gonna let this go, because they attacked us. They didn't attack Chandra. So Chandra can minus on this. If they want to pump here and get a counter, Chandra gets to blast this. And that's ideal. So they gotta let this go. Yeah, so they're forced to not pump here. Or else Chandra deals with it. Yep, they let it go. Alright, down to seven. Top deck, Metallic Mimic. Okay, cast the Mimic first, just in case Chandra finds us a goblin. Pick up. It's nothing, dude. It's nothing. Um, I got to pass just in case of a removal spell. I probably shouldn't have blocked the gifted Aetherborn with my Bone Crusher. Now they're going to gain back nine life here. Dying to the Ebon Legion is a very insane one drop. I can't believe how insane this one drop is. Yo, they don't gain life. Why do they do that? What the heck? Why do they do that? That makes no sense. Now they don't gain any life. And yo, dude, they don't have trample. It's dealing nothing. It's doing nothing here. What the heck? Okay, so the opponent screwed up. And I still got nothing. I couldn't even capitalize off of their bad play. Dang. They still have another pump up. Wait, I have lethal! I win! <laughs> I have lethal here! And now I just attacked them! Yo, you screwed up, dude. You gotta learn how to play magic. That's not how it works. You need trample. You didn't have trample. And now I attack you. And now you die. Oh, you are so lucky. Grayus, thank you for opponent, your tier one sub for two win. months in a row. Thanks, opponent. Yeah, thanks, opponent. Thank you for helping us out. Welcome back to the marination, Grayus. Enjoy your moons, nuts, kinds, ducks, and your spikes yet again. Can we get some duckies in the chat for Grayus? I didn't even know you subscribed. So, but good to have you back for two months in a row. Let's get two duckies in the chat for Grayus. All right, taking them down. I honestly thought we were gonna lose that one and have to go to a game three, and that's honestly looked like how it was gonna go, but the opponent apparently doesn't know how mechanics work. Got a game here against Dakota G, and we're gonna be on the draw with some RG Goblin Company in Pioneer, and I'm gonna keep this hand. It's got two mana. I can go with the turn one land or else. I need two draws to get one more land, and then I can slam a turn two Krenko, and that's ideal. That's what I wanna do. Okay, and two and Aether means they do have Harness Lightnings in their deck. They grab a Plains. Okay, this is something new. Yo. We got our Forest. That's good. I can get the turn two Krenko out and then follow up with Metallic Mimic. I like it. Please don't, uh, please don't Harness Lightning my gob. Blast Blowers. Okay, this is 100% Marvel of sorts. But what's the white for? I've never seen white in a Marvel deck before. Maybe rhinos? You marveling out rhinos? Is this okay? Alright. Shock. Krenko time. And I kind of just want a Coco next turn. Because instead of having one metallic mimic, I could maybe have two. If I Coco into them. But all I need is a Grumgoy to be happy and satisfied. Okay, another glass blower. So they have enough now to marvel. But are they gonna hit their Ulamog? Alright, come on, Grumgoy. Yay! And a war boss. This is great. Make a 2-2 thing off of Warboss, 
Make two two twos off of Kranko. All right, so now can Ulamog even beat this? No, Ulamog stays. Yeah, Ulamog can beat this for sure. We might just go wide enough though. Now they got the Aether Hub as well. All right, it's time to spin the Marvel Wheel. We know you're gonna do it. Oh, they verdict! No! No! All right, so I guess I'm just going to cast a Bone Crusher Giant and play a Land War Elves. Dang! I did not expect a verdict. That's a bummer. We had it right there. It was over. And a Rogue Refiner. I'm gonna have to strike that. And a Wood Weavers to go back up to 19. Oh, this is a nightmare. This turned from extremely good to extremely bad in a matter of seconds. All right. Playing strike that. Metallic Mimic on Boglin. Get in there for five. All right, you got two cards left in hand. I know you can start cracking your puzzle knots too, so you're not dead at all. Yeah, Heroic Intervention coming in for sure. Yo, Rabble? We might be coming back in it. I think they're just going to spend this turn cracking puzzle knots. These things enter with counters too because of Metallic Mimic. So how much is this? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bring it to five. Ooh. Okay, so you're gonna crack the wood weavers and go back up to eight. I know that. And then, or you can just crack both your glass blowers and dig for a verdict. I think that's what they're gonna do. They're just gonna desperately dig for a verdict here, because they have so much energy that it doesn't even matter. Yeah, they're just gonna crack glass blowers here for sure. Yep. Okay, so we know they're in desperation mode, so that's a good thing, but also it's a bad thing that they just cried for. So, please, no verdict, no marvel. It's definitely one of the two. Okay, sure. Sure. I don't mind at all. Yeah, sure. That Now that can just stomp you. <laughs> Yeah, all right, sweet. Oh, that was so close. After getting like six for one, we came back in it. All right, so bring in Rex Ages, or not Rex Ages, uh, Heroic Interventions. Maybe even Rex Ages, like, doesn't seem bad, but it's, I, I think it's not aggressive enough. Mm, I think the Planeswalker plan is too slow. I think I just gotta be mega ultra aggressive here. Um, let's cut a couple lightning strikes. Actually, Bone Crusher is not as aggressive as lightning strike. Let's cut a couple Bone Crushers and just run it like that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Rex Sage kills Marvel Phil, but when they, they're they going to spin the Marvel as soon as they play it and then we'll be dead anyways to an Ulamog, so it doesn't matter. Um, we need mana, summon a mole. Oh, I'm kind of tempted to mull again because this doesn't feel aggressive enough to beat them quick enough. Like, this seems very slow and control -y. Yeah, I'm going to five. Oh, I don't have mana. I'm going to four. All right, I'll keep that. Bottom a um, rootbound crag and a lightning strike. And a game trail. All right, well, in theory, if I hit my land, Mimic into War Boss is pretty aggressive. And then after that, I hope I hit a Heroic Intervention. I did hit my land, so that's something. Oh, and they didn't have Servant of the Conduit. That's good. I'm Now I'm hoping that they don't have Rogue Refiner. Now that would be the next super annoying roadblock. All right, so Goblin here. You can go. This deck's doing great, Tum Tum. Really solid deck so far. They did have the Rogue Refiner, unfortunately. 
But Legion War Boss is going to start spitting out 2-2s. Two Yo, Rabble's pretty solid also. Can't play it right now, though. I have to start on War Boss because I don't want to be forced to swing with my Metallic Mimic. So get him for two. I hope they trade. They're going to take it. Now, I really need to top deck a Heroic Intervention. What's up, Snapkeep Gaming? How's it going? You can only stay a little bit today, but you wanted to at least drop by and say hello. Well, hello, Snapkeep Gaming. Good to see you here. Okay, Teferi Time Raveler is fine. They can probably bounce the war boss. Sure. That's okay. Let's play the war boss back out. Go to combat. Okay, I, I want them to trade with their rogue finder, so what I'm going to do is only swing one at them at Teferi, because that might make them more uh, tempted to trade with their rogue refiner to keep their Teferi alive. And that's the plan. Are they going to keep their Teferi alive, or are they going to let it die? I would like for them to trade off their Rogue Refiner and keep their Teferi alive. Okay, they are. You're going to do that. That's good. That's the trade I wanted to make. But now I don't have a Heroic Intervention, so I'm likely getting swept here. So let's find out if we are about to get swept. I assume we are. Yo, I top decked it. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so this is good. This is good. This is good. Now, I'm also terrified of Settle the Wreckage here. But I'm forced to swing with everything, so... To Fairy... To ferry them, them, and them. I have to attack because uh, Rabble forces me to. All right, let's pump up this Metallic Mimic here. Settle the Wreckage Watch. I guarantee it. I guarantee you it's Settle. Yep. It's Settle. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Dang, Rabble Master forcing me to swing. Mm-hmm. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Well, at least I got wrath protection. I'm so sad. I should have not played Rabble. I mean, I should have played Rabble, but I, I shouldn't have. Because I knew the Settle the Wreckage was there. Just don't have more Rogue Refiners, please. Nissa who shakes her boobies. Dang it. So difficult to beat. Now they have a blocker that can trade with Rabble. Okay, they're tapping. That's good. Servant of the Conduit. At least Rabble can swing into that. I need a Coco to try to get back in this game. I really just need a Coco. Oh, I didn't have Wrath Protection anyways because of Teferi. Okay, at least I got a Mimic to grow my token into a 3-3. Or to a 2-2, rather. So, let's swing probably at Nissa, Or let's swing this one at Teferi. And then this one at... Nissa.
They're gonna keep Teferi alive. I probably should have just swung both at Teferi, because now I can't hold up inter heroic intervention. Yeah, I should I probably should have got Teferi off the board. I just feel like it's over though. Feels it feels very over at this point. Yeah, now they got a Marvel, and they're gonna spin it. Alright, show me Ulamog. Or Emrakul, or whatever. They got Emrakul. Alright, it's over. We can definitely do this on the play. Let's run it right back. You know, now that I see what they're up to, maybe I want to go with Chandra. Chandra's not awful. Would you like to play first? Yes. Too late. I already submitted. Okay, let's keep that because Mimic into Krenko's good. It's a little bit of a slow hand, but I can strike a I can strike a um a, a rogue refiner out of the way. Ever settle your own board for ramp? Are you? Can you even do that? Doesn't it say like target opponent or something? I've never attempted that. Done. Servant, woodweavers. All right. All right, now I'd really like a Grum Ghoulie. Target player. Oh, that's cool. You can ramp yourself like crazy if you're running tokens. That'd be pretty cool, pretty cool in like a Rith the Awakener deck or like a Merith deck or a, G a Gave Guru Spores deck. That'd be pretty cool. All right, I kind of wanted a heroic intervention there, not gonna lie, but I guess this will have to do. I can hold up double lightning strike here, so at least that's aggressive. All right, no supreme verdict, that's good. They're cracking on their upkeep. They're looking for mana, I think. I think that's the only reason that they would crack on their upkeep, because they need mana. Do I have lethal here? Can I just double lightning strike them? Oh, I think I do have lethal. Yo, that's aggro as heck. Let's do it. Lightning strike you. Lightning strike you. I think that'll do it. Yeah, that's game. <laughs> All right. Double lightning strike for the win. Metallic Mimic and a Krenko and a double lightning strike will do it. All right. Now I'm, I'm glad I didn't side those things out. That helped a lot. All right, I honestly thought that was going to be a very scary matchup, especially since I was just going to be like, oh, Supreme Verdict, and then I have nothing to do for a while. But we got there. Got a game here again, Sacramento. Not Sacramento, but Sacramento. And we're going to keep this. RG Goblins. What is this? It looks like a dinosaur. Indrix Affection Treasure. That's really cool. I didn't know Indrix can be affectionate to things that are a one hundredth of their size. Okay, so we're going up against Dredge. This is uh, handleable. We got the turn two Krenko and the Coco, so we can Grumgooly too. This is perfect. And uh, Dredge does not have a lot of interaction, so this is good. Let's shock here. Let's slam this Krenko. And then I'll Coco and hopefully hit Grumgooly and Metallic Mimic. And then that would be the nut draw. And we would definitely love to nut. Grizzly Salvage, gonna reveal a top five. They hit two Creeping Chills. Wow. And they can get another Stitcher Supplier. Okay, so the opponent got a pretty good little play there. They grabbed that, that Stitcher Supplier. I swear if you hit another Creeping Chill. Had a Nacro me, but to get back the prize amalgam. All right, the opponent's doing their thing. Don't remove my Krenko, and I'm happy. 
I hope it's not top deck a Grim Ghoulier Metallic Mimic, though. Okay, good. All right, Coco time. Come on, Grim Ghoulier Metallic. Bone Crusher, Metallic. Okay, let's take Metallic Mimic and Bone Crusher Giants. Uh, let's name Goblin. I guess I'll let you fill your graveyard like crazy. Just so I can get two, two, twos. That's literally it. Triple block, sure. They mill over three lands. And next turn I can strike something plus play a war boss, and that's pretty good too. Hunted dead, gonna come back, bring a spirit along with it, and get back a prize the amalgam that they discarded from their hand. So that's pretty good for them. They're at a healthy 24. How do they gain a bunch of life? Uh... How do they gain for? I'm trying to figure that out. I'm, I can't remember why they gain for. Oh yeah, Creeping Chill. Alright, let's block. I can double block a prize amalgam and block the hunted dead. And take a bunch. Alright, let's do that. Down to four. And passes. Alright, rootbound crag. Legion war boss with the counter. Go to combat. Everything. And then next turn I can declare blocks with Elvish Mystic on here and then strike that. And then I can block the hunted dead here and take one, two in the air. Three and go to one. All right, let's do that. I gotta close this game somehow. Down to 14. Pass the turn. Getting back Hunted Dead again. Discarding a Driven to Despair. Getting back another prize amalgam, not ideal. They had the whole lot of prize amalgams. Okay, now we could be dead. I know I'm taking the two in the air for sure. I know that. And they're flashing back to spare. Alright, so... I probably have to trade with the prized amalgam, block a prized amalgam, and then lightning strike another prized amalgam, and then that's just enough to kill us. Alright, that's unfortunate. This is definitely a good matchup, though, because they don't have a lot of interaction. Uh, so let's bring in... Magma Sprays and Lava Coils can exile their thing so they can't come back, so I guess let's do that. Um, and I think I'm just going to go with those. So let's bring in those, and let's cut... Llanowar Elves. Actually, you know what? I probably want to cut, like, Bone Crusher Giants here. They don't, like... Stomp's not so relevant. And I kind of want my mana dorks because I really want the turn two Krenko and the turn three Coco in this matchup. I really want to be super proactive with my uh, aggression here. So let's, let's run it like that. Seems good. If it wasn't for the Grizzly Salvage hitting the two uh, Creeping Chills there, I think that would have 100% been our game. Would you like to go first? Yes. See, exactly. This is what I wanted. But the unfortunate thing is that this Castle Emberth is kind of screwing us because I don't get to go with the turn two thing here. The, the turn two Cranko. All my lands are tap lands. And that could be our one downfall here. A metallic Mimic with Cranko and a Coco for Grumgooly is exactly what we wanted. So, game trail, go. They're just going to go to discard and ditch one of the things that they want to dredge back. Yo, they're scooping? Why? You did what you wanted to do. 
All right, well, they probably had a horrible hand and want to go on to game three. So let's go on to game three, and we're going to be on the draw this time. Krakatoa 23 asks, is this Dragon Ball Z? I recognize that name. Have you been in this chat before? Am I being trolled, or is that a legitimate question? All right, we got the Kranko again. That's what I wanted. Keep it. Yes, this is Dragon Ball Z. They didn't have a turn one play, that's ideal. Alright, let's go Metallic Mimic on a Boggling. Go. We're playing we're playing Transformers right now. <laughs> Uh, Grizzly Salvage is going to reveal Double Hunted Dead, Scrap Heap Scrounger. They're taking the Land War Wastes. No, they take nothing. They just mill all five. And a uh, Gurmag Angler. Stitcher Supplier. Alright, I have a Lava Coil for that. But I'm definitely slam dunking this Krenko right away. And a Seder Wayfinder. Milling over. Driven to Despair, Fatal Push, Prize the Amalgam, Gather the Pack. Alright, Krenko. Pass turn. So I discard a bunch of cards. What's a, what's a Saberman? Saberman? Thoughtsies. Gurmag Angler. Alright, well that's out of range of my burn spells. I was going to put Rose in the sideboard, but I decided on Lava Coil instead because it can hit flyers and Rose can't, so it'd be good to bring it against like Spell Queller, like Spirit Decks. And that's, that's the only reason I put Lava Coil over Rose, but Rose would have been good here to hit that Angler. And another angler. Okay. All right then. Okay, there's a backup Krenko. What do if I Coco into a rabble? I, I can't hit a rabble. If I, I can't, yeah, I can't hit a rabble. Um. So Kroko, Krenko, or I can Coco into like Grumgooly plus another mimic. And then Krenko is going to get me three four fours, and then I'm kind of tempted to just like swing with Krenko, let them block with an angler, and then lava coil the angler. I'll end up with two 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 or three two twos, which is not horrible, but it's still pretty bad. Um, and I go lava coil plus Lanamore elf, and then the next turn I go with another. This is so difficult, dude. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Yo, this is 1400. Welcome back to the Marination for 16 months in a row. A year and four months. That is wild. Can we get 16 duckies in the chat for System 4200? One, two, three, four. That is a lot of duckies. You have a whole farm of duckies at this time, System 4200. Thank you so much. Okay, what do I do guys? What do I do guys? Do I Coco or do I just go with the Lava Coil plan? I think the Lava Coil plan is too slow. I'm gonna Coco here. Grumgooly and Lanwar Elves. Do I swing and get three three threes? I think I think not. I think I want to wait in Coco next turn and then see if I can like hit two more metallic mimics or something. I just I want more beef. I need to be beefier than those anglers. Or next turn I can go with another another Krenko. Looks like they're doing a whole lot of nothing, so this is this is a good Okay, this is good if they just do nothing. 
They're getting in there? Dude. That's probably fine. They have hunted dead. Do I chump here? That doesn't allow me to go like Lava Coil plus Krenko, but probably fine. I can still go Krenko plus Llanowar Elves. I'm okay with that. Another Grum Ghoulie. All right, let's main phase of Coco here. Get a War Boss and a Llanowar Elves. Make a 3-3. Three, three. And now I can get in with Krenko and Grum Ghoulie. They can hunt to dead all they want. Yep, they can get back their hunted dead. Just don't have more prize amalgams. They had creeping chill and another hunted dead. Okay, this is fine. I feel like we're in a decent position here. They're gonna chump block Krenko, mill over three more cards. They get Narc Amoeba. Okay, this is this is fine. This is fine. We're chilling. And they're getting back prized amalgam too. No attacks. All right, cool. I think I'm going to Lava Coil. I could Lava Coil Prize Amalgam and just like swing a whole bunch of stuff. Um. All right, I guess so. I'm going to make a million more dudes off Krenko here, so that's good. Yeah, they scoop it up. All right, sweet. The Krenko took over. It was going to get another... Wait, that was it? I could have sworn that was game two. Didn't they take the first game? Because, like, we were, like, just just short of it. The heck? That I didn't know it was over already, but sweet. That's a solid matchup for us. I like it, because they don't really interact with our Krenko, and Krenko just walks all over them. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So in this first game, we are going up against a mono blue tempo and immediately you already know my thought process during this matchup. It is pure dread. I'm just dreading for the worst because you know, I, you know how I am when I go up against mono blue tempo. I'm always super tilted being like, yeah, there's no way we can possibly win because they're mono blue tempo and it's just the peskiest deck in the world. And I waste all my resources dealing with everything the opponent does, but then I run out of things to do. Although I do have a Rabble Master that I got off the top. I was able to remove all their threats, and now they're looking for a thing to do. And then here's where I get super tilted because they have Master Waves. And it's just like, that's just one single four mana card that just beats us. And not only that, but they got another one. But for some reason, the opponent was blocking very strangely. They could have killed a rabble so we stopped getting two two dudes off of it but they didn't they decided to just chump block everything and trade their elementals off for my goblin tokens and then i'm able to draw a legion war boss on top of that even though they got another master waves i end up chump blocking their master waves that has a curious obsession on it because i don't want them to draw more cards and there are two life and that allows me to put them in range for a top deck lightning strike and that is exactly what i do so we go on to game number three and they got this little tiny weenie draw with these 1-1s, one and I expected that they were holding up Merfolk Tricksters, and right here I thought they were holding up Harbinger of the Tide, and I, I knew it. I sensed it a mile away, and they did have it here, but I had to just commit as though they didn't have it, because that's the only thing I can really do in this matchup, is hope they don't have the things that I know they have. And, um, because I know that I'm going to be dead to a Master of Waves either way, so YOLO, just 
throw it all out there and see what happens. And it turns out I uh, was able to get out a lot of war bosses and they didn't find a master of waves. And I actually slayed Mono Blue Tempo because they were getting a whole lot of nothing. They had like one card in hand and nothing to do, no master waves. And I, I think that that was th that we got that game just because our opponent seemed to be inexperienced. I, I think that they were making suboptimal plays and suboptimal like targets and, and blocks and all that kind of stuff. So I guess we'll take it. We, a W is a W. So we go into the next game, and this is against Mono Red Devotion. They had a very awkward draw. I didn't know what they were doing at first because they went turn one Fanatical Firebrand, so I immediately expected Mono Red Aggro, and they went land nothing, land nothing, land Chandra Pyromaster, which is a walker you don't typically see. They're able to kill a Goblin Rabble Master token with it, but then we just follow up with killing it, and they have a Glory Bringer to exert and kill a Rabble, but by that point, it's already too far gone, and we got them by then. So we go on to the next game, and I really don't have a whole lot of things to do. Like, I'm trying to just go mimic into, like, uh, Coco and possibly hit something. I, I drew a Chandra. I brought in Chandra in this matchup because it can blast a Glorybringer, and that's good enough for me. But I'm just, they they got Boros Reckoner into Glorybringer, and I just don't have enough to do at this point to, like, get back in it. They they just got us low enough to where if I were to able to, able to kill that Reckoner, it would blast me for lethal damage. So I can't do it. So we go on to game number three. And they got a very weird draw again, but they're removing a lot of my stuff, but I keep playing threat after threat after threat. So even though they have so much removal, I'm keeping up with threats on board and I make it so that like, I got the Grumgully and the Krenko, the, the nut draw that I wanted. And it's just too big for them. It's too huge. Krenko makes a billion three, three tokens because I also have the metallic mimic. And that is exactly the draw this deck wants. And we took them down. So we go on to the next game and this is against Teamer uh, Pyromancer. And so they have the young Pyromancer, and then all they have to do now is literally just start burning everything I play. And that is exactly what they do. And I was talking about how it was weird. It was a coincidence because right here I was talking about in the chat how I really love decks that run Magmatic Insight and Treasure Cruise because that's what I used to play back in the day in Standard. And then th th that same turn, the opponent went Magmatic Insight into Treasure Cruise. So they actually did it. And uh, they made too much tokens. And then they got their little combo going. So for those who don't know their combo, Young Pyromancer, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it makes a 1-1 one, one elemental token. And then Risen Reef says whenever an elemental enters, they get to look at the top card of our library and uh, of their library. And if it's a land, they put it into play. And if not, they put it into their hand. So with Young Pyromancer putting out those elementals, with Risen Reef is just going to get a million triggers. And uh, that's their little fit wombo combo they got going on. So on the next game, they are kind of screwed out of red mana. The way they got out that um, that electrostatic field is they used their seasoned one drop um, quest spell or whatever it's called, adventure spell that makes a green or makes any colored mana when you pay one green. And they're able to cast it off of that. And they have Crumbling Vestige as well. Very interesting mana base. I, I didn't... I didn't think Crumbling Vestige fit very well, but apparently it's meant to be hit off of uh, Risen Reef, as you see right there on screen right now. Because if you get it off of Risen Reef, even though it enters tapped, it's going to make a mana when it enters. So with Risen Reef, that works out. But I, I don't expect that to happen in their deck ever again. They are lucky enough to get it against us once, but I, I don't expect that to happen. It's just four cards in a 60-card in a deck. So um, I'm able to just play a million rabble effects and just completely trample them over before they're able to get anything going and they're able to produce a couple blockers but i had enough burn spells ready to kill their blockers and hit them for lethal so we go on to the very last game in the video and you know how these things go whenever we're playing a deck that's on an absolute rampage i like to save the best for last so you can see what happens so I'm able to just commit creatures to the board and they sweep them with the Ritual of Suit and obviously board wipes are an aggro deck's weakness. And I Coco into a um, Legion War Boss and I'm able to cast my um, Bone Crusher Giant, but they had a Corsair. And then they cast Nissa's Renewal and gain 10 life and ramp like crazy. And to which point they're able to cast a Seasons Pass and get all of their removal spells back from the grave as well as their Sweeper. And I just scoop it up because I'm not going to beat that. And then we go on to the next game and it is basically the same thing. Like I try to get something going. I, I have, they thought seize away my Domri and they don't care about my Chandra because they have a murderous rider. Grafdigger's cage stops Coco, even though I did side it out. But my threats end up just getting dealt with because they have abrupt decay after abrupt decay. I really want to try to win with this Goblin Rabble Master. I was able to take that one down, fortunately, but in this one, we try to win with the Goblin Rabble Master and I have the, uh, Heroic Intervention to try to save it, but they had a abrupt decay in response to them blocking with the Hissing Quagmire. So 
What are you gonna do about it? So this deck's weakness is obviously decks that are mono removal, just like that Liliana deck we went against in the last video. So be prepared, maybe run more Shaper Sanctuaries, but I don't know. When you're playing an aggro deck, mono removal decks are your bane. So we ended up with 10 total wins. Whenever we are playing a deck that is on an absolute rampage, we just keep going until we hit 10 wins and we did it. And the deck was so good. I believe when we we lost to like black green rock or whatever it was because they had like a billion removal spells and that's what'll get you so maybe a more more sideboard like um shaper sanctuaries would be useful in that situation but we also wanted to hold up rogue intervention so like pioneers like it's difficult to like do really good with creature based decks but we did but like because there's so much like wrath decks and like there's sometimes you run into the just mono removal decks and those are a little bit difficult, but uh, I think we got some pretty solid matchups today and we were just able to trample people over before they were able to do anything about it. I love, I really love the Krenko in here along with Grumgooly and Metallic Mimic pumping it so that it attacks for even more goblins and puts out a bunch of like pumped goblins. It's so good and the Coco helps that out so much. War Boss and Ramble, obviously great with those things as well. Just this package right here of these five things is just such a solid package, and we just trampled people with it today. Um, having Bone Crusher Giant as removal is great as well because it's removal that you can hit off of Coco, but also use as a shock, and that's nice. So the uh the the elves were good and maybe i shouldn't have sideboarded them out all the times that i did although it ended up did it, it did end up working out but maybe whenever i side anything in i should probably just cut cocos um because we already have like if we're bringing in a bunch of non-creature stuff might as well cut non-creature or the cocos so maybe i would do that if i play the deck again lightning strike was a was an okay card it was pretty good although you could also run wild slash your preference and maybe wild slash would work good because there was since we have so much three mana dudes there were some times where we had four mana and we want to play a three mana guy but then we can't hold up lightning strike so but in those situations if you had wild slash instead you'd be able to go three drop plus wild slash so you know it's up to you however you prefer to play it um, but let me know what you think about this deck in the comments down below. I think it was awesome. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the deck and the video. And um, subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Go and let me know in the comments down below a deck you want to see for a future video. Go check out the social media. Links are down below as well as the link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hope to see some of you guys there. Thank you to all the patrons, the sponsors, and the Twitch chat. And we are going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.